In this video, I will show you how you can build flip cards in Storyline that flip back and forth with an animation similar to the flashcards in Rise. First, we need a card, and I've prepared a grouped card right here. It consists of a basic rectangle with an outer shadow. I've written front of card one right here. There's a flip icon from the content library, and then there's also this rectangle here at the top. The real charm of using Storyline for this task is the design flexibility it offers. You can put anything onto the front or onto the back of the card. You can place it anywhere you like and you can use multiple objects um, if you remember to group them all together. And uh, we also need a back of the card. Um, for this I've created a layer and um, copied my group onto the uh, back layer and in this back layer I have just made some changes to the card so it's distinguishable from the front. Now we need a way to get from front to the back. So um, when the learner clicks on this group we want to show the back of card layer. How would we do this? With the trigger. I have marked um, the group. I will click new trigger it um, defaults to jump to slide, but we will change it to show layer. It goes to back of card. When the user clicks, group front. Okay. The flip animations will all take place on the back of the card. So on the layer that I've created. That's why we need to make sure that when we're on the back layer, um, the front of the card isn't showing. So um, we will expand base layer objects and then hide group front. So this is just because the flip happens and you would see what's laying underneath this and um, that way we will um, just make sure that the front is not visible. Okay and now we need a flip animation and um, again I will choose the group right here um, click on animations and then um, go to the entrance animations and then click swivel and I will choose a very short timing of 0 0.2 seconds for the entrance and um, exit will also be swivel and here I will choose um, 0 0.15 and these specific timings ensure the swivel animation, which normally does a double turn, appears as a single turn due to its speed. And um, now um, we need a way to get from the back to the front and um, we will use the slide layer properties for this and we will click hide slide layer when timeline finishes. So right now um, we're getting from front to back uh, via this trigger then we're on the back, um, the base layer, front of the card is not showing, we're getting an entrance animation, and we're getting an exit animation, and then we will automatically be back on the um, base layer. And now um, we need to give control to the learner so that he can choose when he wants to go from back to front. And for this, um, we will use two triggers, but the first trigger will be to pause the timeline, pause the timeline on this layer when the user, not when the user clicks, but when the timeline reaches the time of um, 0 0.3 seconds. And now to make the calculations a bit easier, um, I will make sure that this slide layer is only one second long. And now I will create a second trigger that's going to jump to time on, you will have to choose on this layer. And then the time should be short before the exit animation starts, um, 0 0.75. And then, um, yeah, when the user clicks the grouped back, and then um, you have to make sure that the option um, play timeline is checked. Otherwise, we are not going to get the exit animation. Um, yeah, you might be 
wondering about the mismatch between trigger timings and swivel durations. And this is because um, giving Storyline a slight buffer ensures a complete flip. So if we were choosing exact timings, um, in some cases, Storyline would not be able to complete this flip. Okay, now it's time to preview this. Um, let's see if what I've set up here works. Um, we can get from front to back, we can get from back to front. There's a nice animation and we can do this even a bit faster. It works in every case. Okay, and then um, you might be wondering how to add more than one flip card. And um, I've prepared something for this as well. So we have a base layer with uh, three cards. Each of them is a group and we have a layer for each of the cards uh, with the back of the card and on the base layer you have to make sure that when the learner clicks on these cards there's the correct layer that is um, shown and then here you have to make sure that you're hiding the correct base layer object so for back of card one you want to hide group front one and um, one more thing to make sure is in the slide layer properties to make sure that hide other slide layers is not checked. So no check mark right here. Otherwise this will not work. Okay, so that's it. Um, I can preview this as well, just to make sure that everything is working. So I can flip this card, flip this card, flip this card, flip this card. Um, yeah, this is this is working. Okay, I hope that this is helpful. If it was helpful to you, please give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to this channel. There will be more to the point tutorials coming right here. Thank you. Bye.